everybody, and welcome to a very special recording of our Google Slides tutorials. Today, we're going to be walking you through how to create an interactive worksheet out of maybe something you have lying around or perhaps you found on the internet. There's a lot of people right now that are asking the question of how do I take these PDFs and make them interactive? You can see here that I have a PDF on the left side of my screen, perhaps something that you found on Teachers Pay Teachers, something that you've been using in the past, maybe something that you found and copied in. And today we're going to be making that interactive by using Google Slides. Yeah, I, I know that sounds a little weird, but we're actually going to be creating this in two different different ways. So stick around. We're going to be showing everything about this. Now, obviously, as you can see here on the left side, we have a name, a date, we have some directions, we have a, um, a question here, we have a box where the students are supposed to be writing things in. And then also we have a little chart and then two more questions. So how how do you put this into Google Slides? How do you make this interactive for your students? Well, first step one is to understand that as a PDF, we really can't embed that into a Google Slide. So how do we do it? Well, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna come over here and I wanna take a screencast of it. Now, I know that some people might be on a Windows, Chromebook, uh, Mac, anything like that. Not going to go in that today, but figure out how to do a screen cap on your machine. And all I'm going to do is simply do that right now. For a Mac, by the way, it happens to be shift command and the number four. You can just go like that. And so now what I have is my image. I've actually taken an image of that screen. I'm going to pull it up here in a second. And now what I want to do is I want to take that image and I want to put it into our Google slide. Now you're going to notice that if I just do that, if I drag this up here, I have this and it looks nice, but you know, it doesn't quite fit. I need to do something here to make the slides look a little bit more um, custom, if you will. So I'm gonna delete this, okay? I wanna get rid of this and I'm gonna come back over to here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a new blank slide. And so now I have a blank slide. I'm actually gonna delete this first one here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to file and page setup because right now this Google Slides is 16 by nine, widescreen format. I don't really want that right now. I want to do something special with it. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to click on custom. Now, after I hit my custom, I'm going to change this to eight and a half by 11, same size as your normal sheet of paper. I want to make sure I'm also on inches. So now I have a full sheet of paper and I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to grab my worksheet. And you can see that if I put this worksheet up, I now have my worksheet, it's on Google Slides. Now, that's great, but let's talk a little bit about this. Right now, it's an image. It's an image on a slide. The issue here is that your students can delete it. They can destroy it. They can manipulate it. They can draw all over and we don't want that to happen. So I want to show you guys something that you might not be familiar with. It's called master slides. That's right. If I click over here under insert, there's a whole bunch of templates that you can use for your slides. We know that, but these are actually master slides. You'll notice here that if I click on a master slide, this particular one here says, add title. You can see there's a text box and over here it says add subtitle. Now look again, just kind of going back and forth to this. I know that I can add a text box here and now my kids can type on it. It's great. But again, it doesn't always work, right? Cause then they can easily pick this up and they can move it and do something with it. And then that doesn't work for me. So I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff here and just kind of come back. But notice again, these little templates have click to add title, click to add subtitle. Let's talk about that. Couple things. I'm going to call this right here, the outside. So that's the outside. Where's the inside? Well, if I click over here under slide, I'm going to click on edit master. These are our master slides. You're going to notice all of the master slides that we had are right here. And they're also named main point. This is called section title and description. And if you notice, again, this is the outside and these are the inside. So what I want to do for this example here, I actually want to come down here to this blank slide. Okay, and instead of calling it blank side, I'm gonna call this my worksheet. Okay, and I'm gonna hit enter. 
And so now this slide is now called my worksheet. Now, just to show you where I am with this, if I click on the outside and I click down here, this is now called my worksheet. And I, I you know what? I don't need these at all. So I'm actually going to come in here. You don't have to do this step, but just to kind of show you where we are, I'm just going to delete some of these here because this is all very, very easy to do. Again, this doesn't have anything to do with other slides. It's just here. And again, if I click back on here, you notice I just have one worksheet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a copy of this. Okay, I, I just did a cut, which is Command X or Control X on your machine. And I'm going to come on over here to Edit Master and I'm going to paste this in. So now I have my worksheet in here. And if you notice, it's here. But on the outside, what do you notice? I can't click on it. Pretty cool, right? So I actually call this like baking it in. This is actually baked in to the slide. You can't touch it. Your kids can't touch it. Now, we want to come up with a couple things here. What I want to do is I want you to notice that right here it says text box. Now, I could, again, I could click on this text box here, and now my kids have something to write on. And that's certainly fine. Um, you know, if that's all I wanted to do, I could click here. My kids could type in this. I could give this through Google Classroom as a template. I could tell them to write on it. Not a problem. Done. Simple. Easy. Finished. But let's take this a step forward. Okay. I'm going to delete this little text box here. And now I'm back to having this. By the way, um, if I am like this and a kid messes something or does something with it. The cool part is I can always come back over here to this My Worksheet and I now have a fresh copy. So let's click over here on Slides. And again, notice right here on this text box, it just says text box. But if I click on Edit Master, now I actually have a drop down. I have a text box, title placeholder, subtitle placeholder, and body text placeholder. So what does all of that mean? Remember when we had our templates, they had all of those little sections of add image, add text, add body, add subtitle, all of those things are right here. Let me just give you a little idea. If I click on title placeholder and I just make a little box here, this says click here to edit title style. So in other words, if I'm over here, my students are gonna get this. Again, I can't click on here, but here, I can click on this, all that I want. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's go back in and check out a couple things here because that was the title. Subtitle is going to work the same exact way. In fact, let me get rid of this. All right, subtitle is going to work the same way. Here's my subtitle. Okay, so it says click here to edit master subtitle. And the one thing I want you guys to know is that if I click on here, I can do anything that I want. I can change the font. I can change the size. I can change the color. I can do anything over here. And so now when my students are looking at this, they actually can start typing in whatever font you want. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so let's go back because there's one more one here that I wanted to show you guys. And this is the one that we want to use, but this is the one that teachers are mostly confused at. If I click on body text placeholder, look at what happens here. This now puts forth a bunch of text, first level, second level, third level. What, what is that? Well, if you think about Google Docs, you have paragraph styles, heading one, heading two, heading three. That's what this is. But it is confusing because over here, you now have all of this text that trails down on the back end, but on the front end, if you notice, it just here says click to add text, right? So I can, you know what, let's do this. Let's get a new one here because I forgot to delete the other stuff. So here I am now, it just says click to add text and my, you can see my students can type on here. So number one, that's pretty cool. So number one, that's pretty cool, but that's not exactly what we're looking to have. So I'm going to go back over here to Edit Master, and you'll notice this does get a little confusing. So what my suggestion is, is if you have a worksheet like this, use this body text placeholder. And in fact, I'm going to start at the bottom. So that way I don't get myself confused and I don't want to get you confused. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click here. And just to make life easy, 
I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit the middle. So I'm middle justifying this. Now it looks a little weird. Don't, don't freak out. But essentially what I've done down here was I've made this so your students are writing in the middle of the text box. Pretty simple. I know in the back it looks a little weird, but that's okay. Now, what I want to do, notice this is here, but really the text box is here. I want to copy this. So I'm going to go Command C and Command V for paste. And I'm going to put this next one right here. And I'm going to hit paste again. And now this one's going to come up here. And now you notice all three of these now have boxes. But there's two more things I want to notice. Right here, I don't have any way for the students to write their dates down. So I'm going to do that again. I'm actually going to hit V again. I'm going to come down here. Or, you know, you could always start a brand new text box. That's certainly fine, too. But I'm just going to come over here. Maybe I'll do this. Okay, and if I'm going too fast, I'm happy to work with you guys. And let's see over here if I hit Command-C. Command V again, I can actually take this and put this over here. I think by now you understand where I'm going to go with this. So now when I look at the outside, I actually have a spot for my name, a spot for the date and a spot for the, for the text boxes. And that's the first way that we can make this form interactive. Pretty simple and pretty easy. Again, if I want to do only what's in here, now my kids can come in and they can type in. And really, again, you're going to do this and give this out in Google Classroom as a template. Very, very easy to do. I think you guys all know how to do that. If not, check out all my Google Classroom resources. I'll make sure that the link is below in the details. So after that, Let's take on that second phase, right? Because really, now I know how to do this. I get the concept of master slides, but you know, I, I want to show you how to how to do this on your own. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna delete this. Pretend that we've never done this before. Pretend that I have my edit masters. I'm actually gonna come on over here, and I'm just gonna hit Command A. We're starting fresh, and I want to now create this. Okay, I want to create this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here at the bottom. I'm going to insert a table. I'm just going to create a one seat table here. Okay, and I'm going to put this down here. I might, I might not do the whole thing with us today, but let's just kind of see. Here we are, and I'm going to make sure that I have everything here. All right. And so here I have my box. You notice over here that I took the border weight up a little bit and now I have this box. So of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste a second one and maybe I move it up here and I want a third one so I can copy and paste it up here. Now, of course, what am I going to do now? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make my body placeholder and I'm going to stick it right here. Now, this is not going to look pretty, but that's okay. So now I have that. And so now what I want to do is I want to click on this and now what I want to do is I actually want to click on the body text. And again, I'm going to rush through this right now, but I'm going to use body text right now. And if I come over here, I'll put this up on top. Okay. And if you notice, this kind of came a little weird, but that's okay. I'm just going to delete all this extra blank space. This probably won't happen to you, but here I am. I've got this here. Maybe I'll put a number three if I want to right there. And of course, we can change all the fonts and the colors and stuff like that. Let's see. It looks like I got some extra characters in here. There. Excellent. So now we're going to do this as, oh, I don't know. Let's do it as 18. It's a little small. There we go. Okay. Same thing over here. I'm going to click over here on number two, text box. All right, let's get rid of some of this stuff. You get the idea here, right? So in order to do this really quickly, it's just a matter of looking at it, hitting copy and paste. And the one thing I'm going to remind you guys as we're going through this is anything that you're doing with the text box is going to get baked in. So if you look at where I am right now, I can add text to this, but I can't change the directions. I can't change the questions. 
Okay, so make sure that you guys kind of understand that concept. I'm not going to do every single thing here, but I want to do one more. If I hit applies, uh, let's go to edit master and I want to tackle this middle section right here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do a table that is three by two and you can see here it is again. And I know we're kind of off a lot, but here's my table. I'm going to type in January So you get the idea. Now I have my table. I can do anything that I want to it. And here is my table. So you get the idea here that not only can you take this, make a copy, make it into manipulative, but now you can also create it on your own. Now I'm going to show you guys what we can do if you really take your imagination to that next step. I'm going to show you guys how to build an entire game out of this right now using a simple image and a simple rule that we haven't quite talked about yet. So stay tuned here. Okay, so here we are, and we now have a brand new template. This might be something that you want to do at the beginning of a class period, or something that you might want to do as a review activity. In this example, we actually have a map on our screen, and the directions say drop a push pin on top of the location in New Jersey where you live. So the idea here is simple. Tell us where you live. We've got something inside of Master Slides, and we want the kids to manipulate over top of it using a push pin. Pretty simple, right? So here's what we're going to do. We want to find a pushpin. So just like when we were looking for the map, I'm going to click on insert image, search the web. And I'm going to find this image right here. And I'm going to click on insert. And oh, it came out really, really big. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Now, couple things. Should this image be inside the master slide or not? What do you think? That's right. It should not be on the inside. Because if it was on the inside, it would be, you said it, right? It would be baked into the example, right? So in other words, if I was over here and I grabbed my worksheet, I can't manipulate anything. So what we want to do is we want to take that push pin here and we actually want to cut it out. I'm just going to remove it. And then over here, I now have my worksheet. Again, I can't move the state. I can't move this. But if I paste it in here, I now have a manipulative. So in other words, what I really want the kids to do is to take this push pin and put it right over top of where they live. And you can imagine having a few of these. In fact, you know what we'll do? Uh, let me just move this back to here. And I'm going to go copy, paste, 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 paste. And so really what I want the kids to do is two things. And, and I use this to not only show off how to, how to use slides, I use this to help kids with their mouse skills, with their clicking skills, to teach them a few things about Google Slides they might not know about. They're gonna take this slide, they're gonna put it over here. They're gonna take this slide, put it over here. And they're gonna take this slide and put it over here. And they're gonna take this slide and put it over here. And they're gonna take this slide and I'm gonna go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know who's who, right? Everyone has a red slide. I'm going to say to them, can you please take your slides, your, your push pins, and change the color? So how do we do that? Well, very simple. I'm going to click on a push pin. I'm going to come over here to format options. And under recolor, they can change these push pins to any color that they want. So suddenly, they now have a multi-color push pin set. And I know who has the red, who has the blue, who has the black, and who has the gold. Awesome, isn't it? And now you can see this is one big, huge assignment. In Google Classroom, this would not be send everybody a copy of. This would be everybody edits this copy. So as you can see here, not only did we do two different assignments, but we actually did a bonus episode in here and showed you guys how you can make interactive worksheets using Google Slides. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me over on teachercast.net. I am happy to answer any questions that you guys have. And of course, on behalf of everybody here in TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you guys to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.